is the Jeff Santos Show on the Revolution Radio Network. Rebuilding America together. Now, here's Jeff. Thank you, Ron, and good afternoon, Americans, and welcome to the Jeff Santos Show. We are live here in Studio A on the uh, great uh, Friday afternoon here, 72 degrees. Uh, It's uh, fantastic. We should be doing this show from outside today, and one of our uh, contributors is doing just that. Uh, great friend MTC out there making movies and being on the water. We'll talk to Mark Taylor Canfield coming up at about 3.15. Here on the Friday edition of the Jeff Santos Show, the 14th of May, 2021, we uh, indeed have a great show for you, a fully packed show. Uh, our good friend uh, Harvey K. a little bit under the weather today, a little laryngitis, so he's out but uh, in forum is the dynamic duo of Frank Watkins and Alan Minsky, Rainbow Push and Progressive Democrats of America coming together here at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. We will start it off, though, with Mark Taylor Canfield at 3.15, at 3.30. Norm Solomon, uh, another Monday refugee, if you might. <laughs> uh, two Monday folks today, uh, Norm at foot uh, 3.30 Eastern and Alan Minsky uh, with Frank Watkins at 4 o'clock. So the California connection is uh, in the house today on this Friday edition of the program. Uh, Joe Sandberg will be in his regular position uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 o'clock Pacific. And we'll wrap it up with the great Doug McLean as the NHL playoffs you know, <laughs> begin this week. And I joke because they're still playing regular season hockey for the Vancouver Canucks and Calgary Flames. And why is that? Well, they missed a lot of games with COVID-19 issues. And as opposed to just, you know, they're not really going to make the playoffs. So they should just fold the season. No, they want to make sure the draft picks are right and all this other nonsense. So they're going to risk players' careers, and uh, which is insane, uh, just to make it a 56-game schedule. I don't get it, but then again... Uh, I don't make the rules. We'll talk Doug McClain, the former NHL general manager and coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets and the uh, Florida Panthers uh, head coach. Take them to the only time they have ever actually got to the finals in 1996 and, of course, losing to the Avalanche, which may be the favorites uh, this time around, although go Bruins, go. Uh, just a couple of things on my mind today. We're going to talk a little bit about it with our contributors Look, folks, again, I would love to open up the uh, country. I would love to go out and go to a few Red Sox games and do all the things that I normally would do. But these are different times. And uh, thankfully, I I noticed last night uh, that the Los Angeles mayor and the uh, L.A. County officials are saying, hold on a second, Mr. Biden and CDC. We're going to do it on our timetable. We're not going to allow people just to willy-nilly take their masks off and go into the restaurants and get everybody else sick. I hear the Pennsylvania governor, Mr. Wolf, is uh, similarly looking at, at, a, at a number where he needs to get 70% of the state vaccinated before he allows these rules to come out. Good. I hope more and more Democrats, well, the Republicans won't do anything because they're bought off by Wall Street anyway, so that goes without saying. But I hope more and more Democratic governors and uh, city officials, mayors and county managers and so forth, decide that this is not the right thing to do. And believe me, and I, I will talk with MTC about this, you know, he wants to play to, you know, uh, 5,000 people at the, sh- at the Showbox and all these other venues in the great Seattle uh, music scene. But again, folks, we can do this outside. We can have... Our great friend Mark Taylor Canfield playing on some rooftops or some big stages that, you know, the, the crowd is not on top of you. But frankly, and we could be able, should be able to do baseball games, not everybody on top of each other, but what we're doing now, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent of the, of the stadium capacity, you could probably do that too. But the way I see this, We need to continue to talk about this, which you're going to do today. Now, yours truly, I get a lot of things uh, going on in my my world right now. We're also dealing with uh, a lot of things on the business side. I'm going to take a couple of days off next week, so we'll probably be off Monday and Tuesday. Uh, But um, we're going to try to stay on top of this issue uh, over the coming weeks. Uh, And if it's the coming months, we'll do that too. And even though it's a Democratic governor, 
uh, I mean, a Democratic president and a Democratic uh, Congress, I would presume there are going to be a lot more people pushing back on this CDC requirement as time goes by. All right. Uh, well, let's uh, start uh, the show here with our next guest. He is, of course, uh, the great renaissance man of the Jeff Santos show. Mr. Mark Taylor Canfield joins us from the great city of Seattle, where he's on the set of a new Steven Soderbergh movie. Uh, boy, he's a superstar. He's a renaissance man. He's a great individual journalist uh, and an activist. He is MTC, and he joins us on the line. Mr. Mark, how you doing, my friend? Well, I'm hanging out next to Zoe Kravitz. She used to lead in this um, film, and she's done some very interesting films, so got a great feature ahead of her, I think. Is that my Lenny Kravitz's uh, yeah, daughter, on, right? I, I believe so. So we're, we're like, um, in a break right now. We've had this crazy schedule, of course. Uh, the one thing about film, it's kind of like journalism in a way, you know, they expect you to never sleep, so... I had to be here at the crack of dawn this morning, you know, because people are on the set at like 5 a.m. waiting for the sun to come up. Um, and then, you know, of course, there's a lot of waiting around between scenes and things like that. And for some reason, they put me through wardrobe like twice. So I guess I'm playing two different characters. I don't know. I just I just know that, like, they dressed me up as a corporate person or actually a government employee because we're filming at the Jackson, the Henry M. Jackson Federal Building in Seattle. That's where this um, scene is being filmed, and it's, and then also I, I play kind of myself in another part of the film. But the, this is um, a very interesting film, Jeff, because he's taking on uh, a subject that most uh, politicians and not a lot of media really is willing to confront directly, and that's homelessness. So yeah. that is the theme of the entire film, and it's called Kimmy, and it's about, it's kind of, uh, in a interesting way it's very relevant and apropos to what's going on uh, and that is that in seattle there have been raids of homeless encampments at cal anderson park which was the original location for the capitol hill occupied zone the, the autonomous zone chop and but it's also happened in other parts around the city and there's been a, a lot of protests about that and that's one of the major themes of this film is that the, in the film, the city council basically bans all homeless encampments. And so this is the battle between the city and homeless folks to try to save homes um, or, you know, what they have, which is a tents or tarps. So it's a very interesting film, and I'm, I'm curious to see how it turns out because it, there could be some political and social commentary significance to this film that might really help the issue. I've been waiting for some major filmmaker, you know, somebody with the Soderbergh kind of clout, and he's the guy who did Sex, Lies, and Videotape, you know, and so he's at the top of the industry. So he's being bankrolled by Time Warner and HBO. So the big budget film. The other story, too, is, that's interesting is the just the amount of money that they're spending on COVID testing for people and the COVID regimes that we all have to go through. I mean, the first thing we have to do every day is check in with our, our COVID, uh, official COVID contact person who's here to manage that whole part of Issues. So it's quite complicated. We all have to get tested multiple times a week, um, just about every other day, and it's very intensive. But very interesting. You know, I'm learning a lot, and I'm also I've also pitched to several uh, magazines and news sites about doing a a story based on my experience here. So we'll see how that turns out. E either way, I'll probably end up writing at the Seattle Star about what's happening today. Yeah, well, that's, that's a great, great thing for you, Mark. And let me ask you, uh, when you talk about getting uh, tested, is there a, a situation where, you know, you're uh, uh, going in every morning at a certain time and everybody else and, you know, the top actors, the top staff, you know, the uh, the grips, everybody else, they're all getting tested uh, and, Absolutely. you know, negative, positive, the whole thing. And if they are negative, if they are positive, I should say, you know, are, are people being asked to quarantine? Is that how it's working out? Yes, you're assigned pod within whatever crew you're working with or as an actor. And then if one of your pod tests positive, then you all have to quarantine. And so that's the way it works. So they're trying to keep us kind of separated into small groups. And then we're, you know, we don't uh, ever take the masks off unless we're right on camera and they're ready to shoot and they're still 
practicing a lot of social distancing. So it's quite complicated. You know, I, I think for some actors who are used to just, you know, having a good old time and partying all night and then going to the the set, I mean, it, the regime these days is very, very complex, and you have to be very focused and professional in order to work in this industry. And I actually did have a friend. Um, Did we lose Mark? I think we lost our good friend uh, Mark Taylor Canfield. We'll try to see if we can get him back uh, to the program. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's uh, let's go up to um, the arts to say down in the case from Seattle uh, to our friend uh, Mark from San Francisco. Uh, Mark, uh, you hear what uh, your fellow namesake is talking about in terms of uh, the issue of homeless. And in your city of San Francisco, as well as in Los Angeles, and we'll talk to both Alan Minsky and Joe Sandberg later in the broadcast, uh, a homeless issue is uh, very severe. Um, what are you, What is your mayor and other officials there doing um, about it? Because you're a warm city, a lot, so people will come there. It's a, it's a pretty uh, progressive city, so people will, will try to help the homeless. What's, what's going on there, Mark? Well, they're trying to open up um, some facilities for these people to live in. The problem is uh, there's a lot of mentally ill that are on the streets. Sure. And um, th- that, that's, a, that's a real problem that was uh, left by Ronald Reagan. But um, it looks like they're trying to get housing, um, trying to put up housing facilities uh, to address the problem. Um, it, 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 it's, a, it's a huge problem. There's no doubt about it. And um, with this pandemic and, and everything else, it, uh, it's, it's uh, even worse for those people that are exposed. Um, but, uh, you know, it's something we're going to have to solve. Um, in this state, it's a, prob- it's a big problem. So, uh, I, I mean, I don't know if there's any real answers to it other than try to find some housing for them um and give them some assisted living uh, money so they can you know survive but it is a huge problem there's no doubt about it there's no easy answers but trying to get them housing is definitely one of them well yeah it is uh, it is a critical component uh we're talking uh, earlier with Mark Taylor Canfield who's in the movie set and we're trying to get him back before the bottom of the hour as we talk to his namesake uh, in California and get the perspective of some other people uh, around uh, the country on this uh, on this issue of homelessness. Um, you know, Mark, the other thing that, of course, is in the news and I want to get your thoughts about is this idea of opening up. Uh, to me, this is this is really problematic. I see that the uh, L.A. mayor and others uh, are um, are dealing with that, too. Um, what is um what is your thought on this? Before, actually, we're just going to go to Mark Taylor Canfield in a second here. But thirty seconds, uh, Mark from San Francisco. Um, what, what are your What are your initial thoughts here? This, to me, is a little bit uh, too fast, too quick. Well, I, I just think that uh, it's going to take a lot of thought and a lot of effort and um, and and some financial assistance to try to uh, tackle this problem. Um, but it's something that uh, really needs to be one of the top priorities of the state is to address the problem and uh, try to get it, um, you know, at least under control because, uh, I mean, let's face it, income inequality is bad enough, but you've got people that uh, are uh, really uh, having a trouble just surviving on their own because they're just not capable of doing it. So there's also medical problems involved with the homeless as well. No doubt. Uh, All right, Mark, we'll appreciate uh, your insight here. We'll talk to you later in the program. Uh, our great friend uh, Mark, we, we uh, had had our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield, and, and we lost the line again. Uh, and hopefully, we can uh, we can do just that. Um, I want to I want to say, you know, I think it's it's really important uh, that Mr. Soderberg, the uh, famed uh, movie director, is doing this because, as uh, MTC was saying, there are a lot of people uh, who, frankly. Uh, in in world of government are ignoring this issue. Um, our good friend Peter from Florida has talked about the problems in Los Angeles. Joe Sandberg has talked about it, and we'll talk to him later in the in the broadcast today. And these are these are issues. It's a issue for for so many people who live in urban America uh, because you can't go down the street, um, you know, without it being a big part of 
uh, your situation. And that, to me, is a massive, massive issue for state government uh, going forward in warm climates, places like California, Florida, uh, the Deep South. And you know now in the summertime, pretty much all all fifty states, as you know, temperatures will be in the seventies and eighties uh, for the next uh, four or five months. So that's a big, big part of it. I I'm hoping that we can get Mark back and uh, Mark Taylor Canfield. That is, and if we can, we'll uh, we'll go more into detail here uh, on this uh, situation. Uh, in the meantime, let's go back to the phones and uh, talk to our good friend uh, Rudy in Chicago and get his uh, take on how um, their, the city of Chicago is, uh, is dealing with it. Um, okay, uh, Rudy, you are next. Go right ahead, sir. What is the homeless situation in Chicago? Well, frankly, I don't hear much about it. Uh, I don't see much about it in the newspapers. They don't talk about it on the news. And uh, I think it's a problem downtown or the lower level. But uh, I think if you went down there, I think they're all camped on the lower level. However, 